The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing, Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms good morning i'm nico dehan and it's a beautiful day in downtown st petersburg 70 degrees and sunny and it looks like it's going to be beautiful for the rest of the week here. Uh, we're into uh, like a little more of a warm spell again before the cold weather comes back. So kind of nice here, back uh, about 80 degrees every day. So pretty nice. Uh, of course, Paige is not here. She's in Thailand. But I do want to remember uh, to pick up our Health Signals newsletter. I have a brand new one. That's out right now. Starts with the landmark study suggesting that the uh, autoimmune protocol with paleo together is a winning combination. We discussed that uh, last week with Paige. I'd also like to remind you to pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 cell organic, cell-ready liquid ingredients, so it's easy to take. And it's all uh, based on fulvic and humic acid, which are the uh, stuff that lets the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Very important that if you're taking vitamins to know that they're getting actually in the cell. And Primal Edge, is, that's the reason we got it, because of that fulvic and humic acid. Proven uh, soil uh, additives that uh, really make you healthy. So, um, let's see, where are we? Oh, yeah, Primal Edge, I got that out of the way. Um, our phone calls, yes, 877-927-6648 is the number here if you'd like to join the conversation. First of all, like, uh, of course, busy time of the year, folks. Uh, we just had the time change, and now we're having the election today. So I really uh, think that uh, if we want to have effective elections, maybe this should be a national holiday. You know, have that Tuesday once every couple of years as a national holiday, holiday so so that people can go out and vote. They don't have to worry about their jobs, nothing. Just one of those things that uh, would make it a lot easier, I feel. The other thing I want to talk about is the daylight savings time. So we switched over um, this weekend. And, uh, you know, it makes it's a lot easier these days to switch back and forth because we have a lot of automatic clocks. I think I had to change the stove and one other clock in the kitchen that is not automatic, but the other one's kind of changed automatically, which is nice. Then the other thing is uh, I have my pool, which I got before we changed two weeks later. So now some of the... The, the, the pool was running an hour later, and I just kind of let it go because that works all right, uh, you know, with the time change. Not that important, but it does make it easier. But what kind of consequences does th this really have on us? I found a couple of articles. This is sort of NBC saying daylight savings time, four surprising health effects of falling back an hour. Now, twice a, week, a year switching between the daylight savings times and standard time throws us off our usual routine. We might expect to feel a bit sleepy or maybe a little bit off, uh, but springing forward or falling back an hour can have surprising effects. It's linked to changes in our health, diet, and even a tendency to get into an accident. I think it's easier on the way back. I know uh, Ellen, my wife, was uh, mentioning that um, uh, it's a heck of a lot nicer in the fall when we, we fall back. We got that extra hour. You can really feel it, and it feels like it stretches out for a couple of days, and that's kind of nice. Sleep is a kind of outward uh, symbol of timing, the timing processes of our body. And this is by Chris Winter, MD, author of The Sleep Solution. Our bodies function on an internal schedule from hormone release to body temperature to cognition. And sleep is linked to all of these things. So appetite is one of those things that uh, can be affected by this. And uh, this is because of our hormones. Appetite in general is not often... Uh, often is not a body requesting food, but it's the body anticipating the food, Dr. Winnier explains. When your body knows you eat lunch around 12.30 every day or so, it anticipates and prepares for the meal. 
So uh, if we're now falling back, now you're maybe not quite hungry at 12.30, uh, or maybe you're more hungry, depending on you know, what time of year it is. Your uh, body receives those signals from the hormones like ghrelin, which increases our cravings so we're motivated to eat, and leptin, which affects the feelings of satiety. These two hormones are innately associated with sleep, which is part of why, when we're not sleeping well, we tend to overeat. It's a tight hormonal balance between daylight saving shifts, and it can be thrown off completely. Other thing is accidents. Uh, speaking of being thrown off, uh, you may find daylight saving time switches makes you feel mentally fuzzy or slow. Sleep disruptions can uh, conversely affect the cognitive performance of you. Back in 99, John Hopkins and Stanford University researchers published a comprehensive study that analyzed 21 years' worth of fatal car crash data. They found a small but noticeable increase in car crash deaths on Monday after the switch to daylight saving times in the spring compared uh, with the other, uh, you know, when you're falling back. So uh, I think spring forward is more of a challenge because now we lose. We lose an hour and it's usually an hour of sleep if we're in the habit of going to bed at the same time. It also can f affect your mood. Uh, here again, disruptions in normal sleep schedule can throw off hormonal balances. Lack of proper sleep uh, can give you depression, can give you an anxiety, irritability, and mental exhaustion. Studies show that even partial sleep uh, de deprivation can uh, have a negative effect on mood. Uh, Dr. Winters pointed out this can be, have a snowball effect. You feel stressed and anxiety uh, to, because of lack of speak, uh, sleep and maybe the previous night, so it starts to build up. If you have teens in the house, uh, the effects of daylight savings time can even be more impact on adolescents. Uh, not only do they require more sleep than adults, but their habit, uh, habitual sleep-wake uh, timing is uh, typically delayed. It's one thing I noticed when I was a kid, I liked to stay up late, and the later the better. Maybe that's because we were always told to go to bed early, I don't know. But it seems like as I got older, it kind of switched, and I, it kind of switched on me maybe in my uh, 40s or maybe early 50s and all of a sudden now I'm you know if I go to bed at 8:30, it's not that unusual a lot, a lot of times 9 or 9 30 but a lot of times before 9 o'clock and it feels really good of course I wake up at 5 sometimes 4 30 uh, so I think that really makes a difference but I used to love being the night owl and that that was for years and years and years and it changed for some reason and uh, I kind of like it uh, spring forward has links to heart attacks and certain strokes, and the heart has a pretty significant circadian rhythm, uh, Dr. Winter says. We tend to see that disruptive sleep may make more people more vulnerable when they wake up, not causing a heart attack, but perhaps making it a uh, underlying condition, let's say. And there was another star, uh, study in uh, 2014 that showed one hour of sleep uh, during the spring forward to daylight savings, savings time raised the risk of having a heart attack followed uh, for the following Monday by 24 percent. So about a quarter more people have heart attacks, probably more men than women, uh, and that's quite interesting. Stick around, folks. I got a lot more. Uh, I want to remind you I have brand new Health Signals newsletter, issue uh, number 21 for the year, all about the paleo diet and some of these protocols that uh, Paige and I have been talking about. Other thing is our uh, One Shot Wonder, our Primal Edge, is our ancestral uh, daily nutrition. I really recommend this. I highly recommend it because this is something that's going to make you feel a lot better. We'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Paige is in Thailand, and I uh, hope she's enjoying herself. She's probably just landing there right now. Uh, and we're going to hear some awesome stories, I'm sure, and I want to hear all about the food while we're there. So today we're talking a little bit about the daylight savings times, and here's some tips of do's and don'ts uh, to go through this. And I think this applies a little bit more to the spring forward than the, than the uh, fall back, but, uh, you know, it uh, works both ways. Uh, get as much light as possible when you wake up. Uh, you may not feel like throwing open the curtains as soon as you get up and open your eyes, but uh, this is by far the most effective way to jumpstart the change. Uh, Dr. Winter says, he says, your body sets its rhythm in large part by light. And we've talked a lot about this, and Pages bring us, uh, has brought us a lot of information on that. The other thing is uh, do exercise in the morning. Uh, this gets you up and moving as well as exposing you to light, especially if you're exercising outside. And raising your body temperatures is all great ways to wake your body up. Uh, do go to bed your typical time Saturday night before the time change. And as we are typically sleep-deprived society, we should take advantage of that extra hour. And we certainly did that. Uh, another thing is don't over-caffeinate. Uh, uh, over Enjoy your mo mo uh, monthly Joe uh, or whatever your usual, uh, usual coffee habit may be. But don't alter your coffee routine, for example, by checking a cup or two in the afternoon to uh, get you out of that slump you may have. Uh, probably not a good idea. Typically, uh, after 2 o'clock, uh, put down the coffee and maybe switch to some kind of low-calf tea of some kind. Uh, the other thing is don't take a nap. A lot of people, if they're going to be tired in the fall back, you're not going to feel this, but in the spring forward, you certainly would be a little, like, uh, be more tired. Uh, this is where people fall off the wagon, Dr. Winter says. They're so tired that they nap in the middle of the day when it's time to go to bed. Of course, they're not really ready. Uh, which can really have a bad snowball effect for and last for a few days. So certainly that's not too good. Um, found another article here. Let me see if I can get to it here. This is called How Changing the Clocks Twice a Year Harms Our Health and Our Economy. Let me get to it here. Yeah. And this is uh, brought by the uh, conversation.com. Right there. Oops. Nice picture of a clock. Society has a love-hate relationship with the daylight saving time changes. Yeah, and a lot of people are talking about maybe not doing this anymore, too. So this is uh, 
probably coming up in the future. And I think I don't think we need it as much. Uh, in the beginning, of course, they did this to uh, help the farmers, I think, or maybe people in school. But now, I mean, school hours start very early. It's in the dark for most of these kids. So I think we could, uh, you know, do it the right way and just leave our clocks alone and be a lot better for us. But uh, at this time of year, many of us delight in the extra hour of sleep when we're turning back. Uh, when spring rolls around, we have the loss of sleep, so that's no good. Uh, the extra snooze aside, disruption in our sleep can wreak havoc in our minds and bodies, as we've discussed. Deviations from our normal sleep habits, known as sleep desynchronesis, uh, can be a sort of uh, symptoms from that's kind of the same as jet lag, they say, including reduction in attention span, maybe judgment errors, and some anxiety. Uh, the evidence shows that time changes are associated with an increased number of car accidents and heart attacks. The time changes also have an adverse uh, consequences for financial markets, it says. Research I conducted uh, with Mark Kamstra of York University and Mark uh, Morris Levy of the University of British Columbia found that stock markets tend to draw back significantly on Monday after the time change. Well, that didn't happen to this Monday. Um, we studied the stock market uh, returns in several countries, some of which implicated time changes on different dates than others, and we found that after controlling for other factors that influence markets, there was a significant drop in the following time change, following the time change. Of course, what happens on any given day it has a number of other factors too. Yeah, blah, 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 we know that. Uh, calculating that the United States alone on an average one day loss the stock market due to daylight saving times amounted to more than $30 billion. I don't know how they come up with that figure. Uh, we surmise that twice a year losses arose from the consequence of investors being more anxious after sleep uh, disruption and hence more reluctant to buy. So maybe because of the fall back everyone is more relaxed, we had a good money. Maybe that was it. Uh, workplace accidents tend to be greater in both frequency and severity during daylight saving time changes, which translates, of course, into lost wages, higher workman's comp costs, higher medical costs, more training costs for replacement workers, and reduced productivity overall. On the average, time changes are expensive for both businesses and government, and yet we keep persisting to do this. Uh, Year-round uh, daylight saving times, this has been talked about in Florida with our governor, uh, and we've pro been promised this a couple of years, but it's never really come up. Uh, the other obvious alternative is to remain on daylight saving times year-round, meaning essentially that the clocks don't change twice a year. This uh, uh, option would arguably lead to relatively better outcomes in the financial markets, car accidents, heart attacks, and workplace injuries. Year-round daylight savings times has additionally uh, these advantages. The state of Massachusetts elevated the relevant academic literature and concluded that reduced street crime would result from remaining on daylight saving time uh, permanently, including a reduction in robberies due to more daylight in the evening and a decrease in incidence of rape also. This all has to do with the darkness, I presume, of what they're talking about. Uh, when daylight saving time changes were first adopted in various jurisdictions more than a century ago, energy cost savings were touted as the major benefit. The details depend on the specific latitude and time zone, but now it appears that the benefits were vastly overrated. So maybe it was a political ploy. Uh, recent studies have found that adopting daylight saving times year-round would lead to modest energy savings and perhaps reduced greenhouse gas emissions too. The implications of year-round daylight savings times wouldn't all be sunny, however. An undesirable implica uh, implication would be darkness during the morning period when p children often head to school. Well, why don't we change their hours? It'd be simple. The children don't like it early morning anyway. I didn't like it early morning. Kids have that uh, natural rhythm that uh, they don't wake up till 11 o'clock, really, and if they're in the classroom, you've got a lot of kids that are half asleep, I feel. Uh, let's see. Clocks may soon so stop the shifting. European uh, citizens recently participated in a public consultations about the time changes, and the majority of the respondents expressed a desire to adopt daylight saving time year-round. Uh, this is the European uh, Parliament adhered to these recommendations and would voluntarily. So they're, they're thinking about this. Over time, uh, the time has arrived for us to stop 
and this is just a commentary on it. So he suggests that we just get rid of this, and I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, I don't see the much advantage anymore. It's a lot of disruption. Uh, it's nice that we have these automatic clocks these days that you don't have to change every single clock in the house. That, that makes it a little bit easier. But uh, I think these days, with everybody working all different hours, kids going to school all different hours, farmers mostly being mechanized anyway, uh, I don't see any need for this, so I think probably the best thing for us to do was let's just go back to standard time or maybe daylight savings time. I don't really care. I always thought Florida should be in the central uh, time zone anyway. It just feels like it would be more than half of our state actually is the panhandle, I believe, is uh, in central time. So that would be nice. Anyway, during the break, uh, please uh, pick up our new Health Signals newsletter. I got the new issue out here. Uh, you get uh, the issue on the first and third Tuesday of every month, and it's only $10 a, a month, so $5 an issue. The other thing, of course, is our Primal Edge. Please pick that up, and if you want to be really healthy, uh, you want to be ensure you're getting all the vitamins and minerals and it's going in the right place. This is the product you need. Stick around, folks. I'll be right back. We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today tfnn has launched our brand new website you can still visit us at the same tfnn.com url but when you do you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And welcome back. Uh, of course, Paige is in Thailand. She'll be out all month. So I'm just having Tuesday shows through the month of November. Gives me a chance to do other things, too. And... Uh, 
One of the, the things that I enjoy uh, is my first meal of the day, and I usually do breakfast. Sometimes I skip it, but I think uh, it's a nice jump start. And uh, I was wondering how you know people around the world really liked it and what people eat for breakfast here, because I see a lot of Dunkin' Donuts here. You see a lot of things advertised, and most of the things, if it's in food, they're being advertised. A g general rule, I say that it's probably not that good for you. That's just my personal opinion on it. I did find this article, How People Do uh, Breakfast Around the World, and uh, when you're looking at breakfast, you see the bacon and eggs here. This is the most popular breakfast in America, and this is pretty much, I usually have eggs and sausage in the morning. On Sunday, we have our bacon, so uh, usually once a week we have bacon, but I like a little bit of sausage, and I get this homemade sausage from a vendor, really nice. So uh, the next time you're sitting down for a nice breakfast uh, of bacon and eggs, know this. That's the preferred breakfast of most Americans, according to a very small uh, but interesting survey of breakfast cuisine around the world. Perhaps because we're living the age of keto, the fat and protein morning meal edged out the carb fare, like pancakes and donuts and bagels with cream cheese, cereal, uh, biscuits, and gravy. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of replaced it now in a sense. Uh, you know, uh, I still, you know, when you go to the office in the morning to a lot of these offices like my wife goes to, you'll find donuts and bagels and things like that there. But uh, the preferred eating, if you go someplace to eat or if you eat at home, they say right now that bacon and eggs is the big thing. So meanwhile, the, uh, uh, France and Germany and Italy are fully embracing carbs to kick off the day. They rank croissants, uh, a uh, brothen, which is a small crusty roll, uh, the cornetti, which is the Italian's take on uh, French flaky croissant, tops. They like that. Uh, those living in the UK rank, uh, ranked full breakfast, whatever that term kind of means. First, Mexico is really into uh, chinquillas, a um, bunchy dish that cleverly integrates leftovers. So this is uh, in Mexico where maybe the uh, standard of living a little uh, lower, so a lot of people will incorporate leftovers. And I remember certainly that my mother did the same thing when we first moved to Canada from Holland. Anything that was left over uh, from the night before, she incorporated in breakfast. A, a cool idea, a way to get rid of the uh, leftovers and usually the stuff is already cooked so you just have to heat it up it makes uh, sense to me uh, let's see uh, there's uh, here's one thing just because people say they enjoy delicious breakfast food doesn't mean they actually eat them on a busy weekday morning and they're rushing off to work the survey found Monday through Friday people in the UK tend to swap their sprawling full breakfast for a quick bowl of cornflakes while we Americans may uh, are making do uh, art with cereal. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Even the French are saying their beloved croissants for Sunday and eating baguettes uh, other days of the week. So they're eating a lot of carbs. Uh, in uh, Spain and Italy, almost they never skip breakfast, and 90% of them are reporting that they eat it every day of the week. And one out of four Germans say they go without breakfast on a typical work day. Hmm. Interesting. I did find another one which I thought was more interesting than that. If I can find this now. Oh, yes. There it is. Okay, so let's go. Since, oops, wrong one. Since Paige is in Thailand, I thought, what, are the ta what do they eat in Thailand? And here we have the street vendor. And I bet you, and I told her, I said, street food. You know, I, I like to uh, listen to these, uh, you know, watch these food shows, Bizarre Foods and all these other ones that, uh, and they're really good. And I really enjoy them, especially when they go into a culture like Thailand. And the uh, oriental uh, area of the world really has a lot of street vending. And we in St. Pete have a lot of that, too. In fact, if you want to taste cultural foods in St. Pete, that's the thing to do is you go around to these food vendors, the trucks, and they have a lot of different vendors out there from all different cultures. Uh, so let's go through some of this. I thought they found this interesting. Grilled meats like Mopin and uh, Gai Yan uh, make a convenient filling and tasting breakfast to go. Various meats are available on street food stands already skewered on a stick making eating a breeze. They have chicken, pork, fish balls. Pork balls are especially popular. Some meats are seasoned while others come with different sauces to add to your own taste. The meat is sometimes accompanied by a salad or a ball of sticky rice. And you can see here they're just laid out there. This is kind of cool. 
you can just pick whatever you want. Now some of these pronunciations I'm not going to do too well on, but this is uh, Konam Croc, according to me. <laughs> it's a tasty and sweet Thai item, often eaten as a snack for dessert. It may also be eaten as a light breakfast, and uh, street vendors whip them up in uh, plentiful batches in the morning and feed the hungry. Uh, small uh, gel gelatinous items are made from a mixture of rice flour, coconut milk, uh, various fillings may be included. Spring onion is very common. Other fillings may include some sweet corn or chives. And there's a picture of that right there. Donuts. The Thai style deep fried donuts, known as the Path of Gonko, are widely available in the morning. Made from wheat flour and yeast, the fluffy dough is made into small balls, twisted or X shapes, and fried in piping hot oil. The small and uh, crispy donuts may be sprinkled with sugar and then condensed milk and penned, and custard are also toppings that are much loved. Grab a cup of coffee while you're at it, and you've got a great breakfast. So this is kind of cool, and this is uh, something that is definitely a Thailand thing. The other is uh, omelets and rice. That's a Thai meal available in most restaurants and many street stalls. It is uh, probably different uh, than you generally expect from an omelet. Thai omelets, known locally as uh, kea yo, are uh, fluffy and airy inside, but delicious and crispy outside. Rather than being shallow fried, omelets in Thailand are deep fried, hence the different texture. Minced pork is a common addition, though you can get your omelets with an array of vegetables and other fillings. The egg-based dish is typically served over rice uh, with a sweet chili sauce. Hold the rice if you can't face it for breakfast. Yeah, I would definitely hold the rice for me. Uh, interesting, very interesting. And I'm wondering, you know, they're doing a lot of frying in this, and I'm wondering if they're using the old traditional oils that they've always used, or they've switched over to something like the soy oil, or maybe the peanut oil, or maybe even the uh, really bad vegetable oils. Uh, I think generally they would have used sesame oils. If, we, if, if this is the Orient, this is going back some, but naturally that's more expensive than these new oils that have come out in the last 50 years. Just a thing I'm wondering about. Uh, here's a yolk, uh, not to be confused with uh, ko tom, a similar dish, and it's a type of rice po porridge, thicker and mushier. Uh, it's among the most popular dishes at breakfast time in Thailand. It can be eaten alone or with a variety of other ingredients and seasons. Many people like a poached egg in their konshi. Uh, boy, lots of pronunciations here. Tom Lod Mo. And this is popular with many Thais, but maybe not so much with the tourists. It's a fairly bland soup, commonly eaten with rice. You can add chili flakes, fish sauce, vinegar, soy sauce, or other condiments of your choice. and get the flavor just how you like it. The ingredients may turn your stomach, though, especially if you haven't been out of bed too long. It's uh, made from chunks of uh, congealed pig's blood and offal. Yeah, it's a little bit different over there, isn't it? Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Uh, if you'd like to give us a call, it's 877-927-6648, and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back to the show. We have a caller, Tom, Tom from Tampa is on the line, uh, one of our favorite callers, so let's get him on board. Hey, Tom, how's it going today? Hey, good, Nico. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What's up? Good. Hey, a question on uh, raw honey. I uh, I like taking usually I don't know three, four teaspoons before I go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. um, I know I know we got some sugar in there, but I mean that's really it's more of a natural sugar. I mean it, it, that's it, we're fine there, right? Yeah, it's easier to metabolize. Uh, I don't know if uh, I usually take like one before I go to bed. I don't know if two or three would. I think everybody's different on that. So if if it's working for you, that's fine. Uh, it's metabolized a little bit different than the sugars that are pretty common in uh, our modern society. But uh, yeah, at light time, that's going to be helping the melatonin kind of uh, release. So definitely. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I was noticing um, in the newsletter there on some of those organ meats too, on some of those um, you know those wild meats. Uh, yep. I was amazed the benefits uh, you know with uh, some of those different types of um, organ meats you had there in the newsletter there. Yeah, I, it's a, I kind it's of a lost art. Uh, people are kind of uh, feel icky about it, but this is what our ancestors ate, and uh, it, the proof is that we're here and we're healthy. So uh, I think eating the organ meats uh, put that into the schedule for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was a great article in there. Cool. Well, yeah, I appreciate so, you picking uh, you up. Been that. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate Good. it, man. Good. Thanks a lot. Take care. Okay, Nico. Take Bye -bye. care. Ah, uh, that was Tom from Tampa. He's always uh, got uh, on the cutting edge, I think, of trying these things that are in the newsletter and trying our primal edge and you know eating the way uh, that we're suggesting. And I think it's a good idea. Of course, we want you to really convince yourself by doing the research yourself. And this is why it's important to pick up the newsletter. It's only $10 a month. You get two full issues. And it's all what we talk about uh, on the show. Uh, I want to switch a little bit over to the glyphosate uh, article here, uh, glyphosate in food, a complete list. Now, uh, there's a complete list of brands also, which I'll show you. And you notice, of course, that uh, they're spraying here the uh, Cheerios, but uh, most plant food is the glycid, you know, this is what they spray, is plant food. Now, animals uh, are susceptible to this too, so if uh, you've got some overspray from your crops and it lands on the grass and your sheep and your cattle and your goats and everything are eating out there, they will have to deal with that, but they do if they're healthy animals and eating their natural food, they come upon some glyphosate, their liver may handle that pretty well, so still go organic. 
you know, and try to get away from this stuff. But I wanted to bring it up to you basically because, you know, this Monsanto is in a, uh, they had published this, uh, let's see. After the first successful trial of taking down Monsanto, an environmental working group, that's the EWG, published a haunting report on the level of glyphosate in food. According to the independent laboratory test commissioned by the EWG, popular oat cereals, oatmeal, granola, and snack bars come with a heavy dose of cancer-causing weed, weed killer Roundup. And glyphosate is the main ingredient in Roundup and back in 2015, a famous study published by the International Agency for Research of Cancer came to the conclusion that glyphosate is probably carcinogenic to humans. The link between glyphosate and non-Hodgson's lymphoma is particularly strong. One study, study published in 2008 found that exposure to glyphosate tripled the risk of the subtype of non-Hodgson's type of lymphoma. Another study in 2003 showed a suggestive link between the glyphosate-based herbicide use and the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The more pesticides a subject used, the more non-Hodgkin's lymphoma incidences increased. Aside from cancer, glyphosate is associated with other health issues like kidney disease, uh, reproductive problems, liver damage, and birth defects. Of course, kidney, liver, reproductive problems, these are all very sensitive areas, and the two of them there are uh, linked to, of course, detoxing the body. So no wonder they're affected by this because they're just uh, unable to handle it. Regardless of the ev uh, evidence, Monsanto still states that glyphosate has a 40-year history of safe and effective use. In evaluations spanning four decades, the overvaluing Whelming conclusion of experts worldwide, including the Environmental Protection Agency, has been that glyphosate can be used safely. And it seems that uh, Monsanto is still in denial. Um, you know, they test their own products and they come out with these wonderful tests and everything's okay, folks. But the, all the independent laboratory tests show that's not the case. So let's show you the list here. And this may be some of the things you're eating. In granola, we have Back to Nature, Classic Granola, uh, Quaker Simply Granola Oats, Honey Raisins, and Almonds, Back to Nature Banana, Walnut Granola Clusters, Nature Valley Granola, Protein, Oats, and Honey, uh, Kind Vanilla, Blueberry Clusters with Flax Seeds. The Instant Oats, these are giant Instant Oats, original flavor, uh, Quaker, Dinosaur, Eggs, uh, Brown Sugar, and Instant Oatmeal, uh, Yumpequa oats, maple pecan, and market pantry instant oatmeal, strawberries and cream. Uh, there's a breakfast cereal, kasha hearts. You look at all these folks, I'm telling you, this is in all our food, especially grains. Kasha heart, Cheerios toasted, Lucky Charms, Barber's multigrain spoonfuls, uh, Kellogg's Kraken oat brand, your snack bars, Kind Oats Honey, uh, Natural Valley Crunch granola bars, Quaker Chewy Chocolate Chip granola bars, uh, Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Soft Bake, and then you have the Whole Oats, the Steel, Quaker Steel, and the uh, Old Fashioned ones, the uh, Bob's Red uh, Meal Steel Cut Oats. So all the time you're thinking that you're eating really good uh, oats, it may not be the case. Environmental defense sources are listed here too, and they list a bunch of products also. And these are products from around the world. Some of them are Cheerios cereals, Kellogg's cereals, Kraft dinners, Quaker large flake oats, uh, Ritz crackers, uh, Sabra humus, uh, Oreo cookies, Tom Horton's chocolate, uh, Tom Horton's sesame seed bagels, uh, chickpeas, moms across America, all kinds of juices. So if you're feeding uh, juices in the morning with Minute Maid or Slat Statler or si Signature Farms or Kirkland or Tropicana orange, all have glyphosate in it. Food Democracy Now has a list of detox, uh, uh, let's see. Boy, this is a big list too. Cheerios, honey oat cereals, Wheaties, Tricks, gluten-free uh, bunny cookies from Annie's, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Bran Flakes, uh, Organic Process, Special K's, Frosted Flakes, Cheese at Originals, Cheese at Whole Grains, Cashy Soft Baked Cookies, Ritz Crackers, Tritz Crackers, uh, Oreos, 
all different kinds of Orioles. And this is gold flakes, crackers, all these little gold flake, little goldfish ones, I should say, uh, little Debbie oatmeal cream pies, cookies, and a whole bunch of other. Ice cream has it in it, tampons have it in it, non-organic cotton clothing products have it in it, rainwater has it in it, and the sources are all here. So these will appear in the newsletter, and when you hit a source like this, it takes you to a site that talks about what you're talking about there. So really handy to pick up that newsletter and, uh, you know, try to do some of your own research. How to steer clear of glyphosate in foods and looking for non-GMO types of items. Very important to do this, folks, for your health. Stick around. i got another segment left. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 8.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Every morning at 8.30 a.m., Jason Paff starts things off with his program, The Morning Market Kickoff. At 9 a.m., Larry Pezzamento breaks down the market for the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Nadex Options Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back to the show, folks. The uh, last thing I want to talk about when it comes to living longer through exercise is more better. And uh, we have a big exercise craze in uh, the United States, and maybe it's worldwide in uh, the modern societies. But uh, is too much, you know, what, what is too much? They say you know, everybody can handle things differently, I think. A study found that the benefits peaked for those who exercised 10 or more times the CDC's weekly minimum. 
So sometimes you can overdo it, I think. And I think everybody's different than this. And of course, it's what you're used to. Uh, I've talked many times about uh, these companies uh, that uh, really push you hard when you go into their facility. And you have a trainer there. And uh, CrossFit is one of those uh, that has a reputation for that. And this is individually. This is not as a whole. But uh, I know there's a lot of good trainers in CrossFit. But the idea is, where do you start from? That's the point. If you're a novice, you've never really exercised much at all, and you're 40 years old, and you've got, now you go into CrossFit and, you ha uh, CrossFit, and you have somebody pushing you very, very hard, then you're going to run into lots of problems. First of all, you're going to be sore, naturally. So easing into exercise is a much smarter way uh, of doing it. And there should be beginner programs in the CrossFit uh, type of thing, and I don't know if there is. I've never really been to one, except I've had a couple of talks about diet in them because of the paleo movement, so integrated with them. But a lot of times you push too much, so uh, I think going for long walks is a really, really super thing, and it's something genetically that uh, we are brought up on. We walked everywhere. Uh, uh, maybe in the last 100 years we stopped, but uh, before that we walked everywhere. And uh, our society was really set up for that. You know, Europe is more set up for walking, where the United States, they really have a lot of problems sometimes walking uh, because there may not be a complete area that's, uh, you know, different from where the bicycles and from the cars are. In fact, in a lot of cities are complaining, these scooters that they're putting everywhere, then they can ride them anywhere, apparently, on the sidewalk, off the sidewalk, where the pedestrians are, and people are complaining about it. So we really have to get our act together, but walking is the way. Uh, and we discourage walking in the United States, not through exercise, but we discourage it in a way because our society is not set up for it. We have too many roads, too many cars, too many things like that. Anyway, uh, when it comes to uh, living longer through exercise is more better, I don't think so. I think take it easy. Get some rest. Clear your mind, especially after this election. Anyway, that's my show. I'll see you next week on Tuesday. Uh, I'm wishing really good things for my partner out there in Thailand. Hope she's doing well. Bye-bye. Jason Path has just launched his weekly newsletter, The Quantitative Edge, available only at TFNN.com. Right now, you can sign up for Jason's outstanding weekly report, including midweek updates whenever warranted, with a 30-day money-back guarantee included, so you have nothing to risk. Jason develops his trade recommendations by creating an ensemble of predictive and mathematical models trained on data by leveraging a variety of techniques, including market-based computer simulations. Jason then combines these sophisticated predictive and analytical models with deeply researched macro outlooks to identify opportunities in a number of different markets for traders to act on. Whether you're looking to trade futures, equities, commodities like crude oil and gold, forex, or cryptos, Jason covers it all. Sign up for Jason Paff's weekly trading newsletter right now by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the quantitative edge under the newsletters tab. TFNN.com, educating investors.